Hello, everyone, and welcome to Makeover Monday 2023. Happy New Year, and I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday season. Uh, I apologize for getting the data out a bit late yesterday, but I was traveling with my kids and simply didn't have time to do it. Uh, if you're new to this channel, my name is Andy Kriebel. I am the global head coach at the Data School. I teach people to be great at Tableau. That's my job, and that's what I'm trying to do for you as well. In these Watch Me Viz sessions, I take you through the data that we're using for Makeover Monday. I build a bunch of different charts, hopefully explain along the way what I'm doing, uh, in order to come up with my final visualization. I, I tend to build lots of things, um, and you can watch it back and uh, probably learn a few things. I'd be surprised if you didn't learn something. Um, but if you do, please leave a comment and let me know something that you learned. So in there is a... Uh, a chat going on, uh, so feel free to leave comments in the chat, and um, I'll be monitoring that on my second screen over here. So if you see me look away like I am now, you'll see that um, I am looking at the chat. So leave me a comment if you learned something new. Let's go ahead and uh, and get started. Um, let's see. Okay, so let me just hide my screen here. All right, so we are looking at, uh, and I think. The screen is okay. Uh, if somebody could just uh, let me know if the screen's okay, um, I believe it is. But if you could just let me know, that would be that would be fabulous. Okay, so the data set we're looking at this week. Let me switch over to the um, the website. So it comes from the. I always have trouble saying this. The National Oh NOAA. I forget what it stands for. National Oceanic something association um, or agency, something like that. Um, but basically, we're looking at data about greenhouse gases from 1979 up into up until 2021 and how things have changed. You can get data all the way back to the 1700s if you want, um, but I just went with what was on the page because it was easy for me to, uh, to copy and paste. If I go down here, it was easy for me to kind of copy and paste this data without much effort since I knew I needed to get out on time. One thing that I put in the data set that was up on data.world was this last column percent change. I had put percent change versus 1990. That actually was not correct. This should be percent change versus the prior year. So this 2.3 means it's 2.3% higher. 1980 is 2.3% 2 higher than 1979. So I fixed the data on data.world, but if you used that column, for uh, any of your analysis, you might want to go back and check it because it's actually a year over year change. Okay, um, the chart we're looking at is this one right here. So uh, we have the CO2 um, equivalent mixing ratio, so parts per million, and they give it as 2A, so CO2 alone, which would be uh, this column here. And then the second one is uh, CO2 plus the other non-CO2 um, GHGs, GHG, yeah, GHGs. And you can see that the data for that is like, you know, 600 or 700, something like that. Um, and I believe that is, yes, yeah, so that's this column here, this total column. So the black line represents that total column and the light blue line represents the CO2, and then the red line is represented by the um, aggregated index. So that is, let's see, so 1.5. So that is uh, this, uh, sorry, it's the change versus 1990, I believe. Yes, yeah, so let me just double check that. So um, yeah, so it's the change versus 1990. If, uh, no, is that right? Let's see. Let me go back up to the chart here. Sorry, I know I'm spinning through the through the chart here fast. Sorry, it's probably gonna make you sick. Um, so annual greenhouse gas index. Yeah. So that's this this column here, AGGI. So everything is relative to 1990. So if I go here, if we look at 1990, uh, let me see if that's the right. If we look at 1990, uh, we're gonna be right about here, in that spot there, and that is. Um, that, so that's the baseline. So 1990 is set at one and everything else is relative to that baseline. Okay. If you have any questions about the data set itself, please, again, leave them in the chat and I will get to them as uh, if, if I can. 
can't promise anything. So this is the data set. Um, you see I've updated it here on the right hand side and let's go ahead and get started. The first thing is the, I'm just gonna try to start by just rebuilding this original viz just to make sure that I understand what the data looks like. Um, I tend to do that on most visualizations I create uh, for Makeover Monday. So I'm gonna start with the year and that's gonna give me the, um, the y-axis across the bottom. And then on the left-hand side, we wanna have the CO2 equivalent mixing ratio. So that's gonna be CO2. And then we're gonna have the, uh, let me go back over here. And I believe I said it was the total column. Yep. So we wanna put total as a combined axis view. And then the, um, the right-hand side is the index. So that's going to be the aggregate index versus 1990. So I'm going to put that on the right-hand side. And uh, what happened here? So I've lost something. So where's my total? Oh, so the total and the, how do they line up perfectly like that? Oh, okay. Well, it makes sense because they're very, cl very close in numbers. So, um, okay. Yeah, so, so that's it. Nothing... Nothing particularly interesting there, actually. So um, I've rebuilt the original. It's not particularly useful, but we will uh, we will go on. So their data goes back to 1700. So that's why we see this big curve. Right. So let's keep going. So I'm going to look at. Um, let's see. So I'm going to look at the index versus 1990. And again, we get this straight line. But maybe I'm going to look at the versus prior year. There we go. Um, and these numbers, if I go back over here, represent, it's already a percent change, so it's 2.3%. So what I should be doing probably is, uh, if I wanna represent these as a percentage, I could either create a new calculation that is divides this field by 100 and then format as a percentage, or what I could do is go to my number formatting leave it as a custom number, and it looks like it is to uh, one decimal place. And I'm just gonna put a percent sign at the end, something like that. And I could label maybe the ends of the lines. Let's do the line ends. Okay, now I like to have little dots on the ends of the line, so like you click on one, you get a little dot. So I do that by going to the label shelf, and I'm going to uh, choose, I'm gonna change it to min max, now, min-max will typically just look at the values. So you can see my lowest is, my lowest year over year change is 1993 and the highest was 1988. But I wanna actually label the ends of the lines with little dots. So in this field section here, I'm gonna change it to year. So I'm gonna label the minimum and the maximum year. Uh, what happened there? Um, ah, okay, but 19, okay, 1970, uh, 879 did not have any data. So let me actually uh, filter this out. So let's see. So let's start with 1980. Okay, there we go. So now we can see the labels on the ends of the lines. And that just gives me the year, but I want to have the change. So I'm just going to drag my versus prior year to the label. And now I have little dots on the ends of the lines, which I kind of just like the aesthetics of that. Okay, um, right, again, nothing particularly interesting there. Um, what else can we do? Let's maybe draw some spark lines and see what we get. So I'm going to bring maybe measure names onto here and I'll put measure values there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna edit the axis and they are all independent and I'm gonna uncheck include zero, right? So that's the first thing I do with a uh, spark line. I'm gonna now drag the chart over and shrink it up. Okay, and now we have our versus prior year. So actually versus prior year probably doesn't make sense there. And my count I don't need. So I'm gonna reorganize these so that they are in the same order they are in this data here. So we start with CO2 and then uh, we go to CH4, and then actually what I could probably do is default properties. Okay, I'm gonna actually sort measure names. That would be easier. Um, so I'm gonna sort them manually. So that's gonna be my last one. Put that at the last one. 
versus prior year last. Okay, so that gets me kind of to the end. So CO2 is going to be first. Oops. And then CH4. N N two O CFCS N two O CFCs HCFCs oh, right uh, HFCS and then we have the total and then the CO two equivalent parts per million okay so. We can now do that, and then if I clear my sort on my measure names, they now get into the, the proper order. So we're looking now at the same data, <clears throat> but in chart form and each of the measures um, individually. Okay, but what is this telling me? Um, it's just telling me that they're all going up. So again, it's not particularly useful. Um, okay, so CFCs have gone down. I guess that's good. And okay, it looks like we need to do a bit of renaming here as well. Um, so I'm going to re edit the alias and make this CFCs. Actually, what I could do is just rename the fields. And this one should be HFs, HCFCs. Rename. And. Uh, Okay, what I, I'm curious if I could do like, um, so let me uh, rename this and I want to see if I can actually do like a subscript. So let me, uh, okay, so I'm going to go out to, I want to see if I can put like a subscript in there. Um, so I'm going to go out to this handy dandy, uh, where is it? ASCII symbol website. I'll try to remember to put the description to this in the, um, uh, in the show notes, but I will also paste it in the chat here for you. Oh, I need to sign in to chat. Open web browser. Sorry, I need to sign in to chat. Okay, so let me close that. Now I should be able to, oh, what the heck. Ah, okay, so it's not letting me put it in the web browser. All right, that's fine. Um, actually, I'll just go ahead and sign in real quick so I can at least post this in the chat for you. Okay, so now you can see that. So that is the website that I'm on now. Um, so, now what I need to look for, I'm gonna, oh, here we go, superscripts and subscripts. So um, I'm assuming this one is a subscript. Yeah, so I'm just gonna copy that and see if I can rename this. So let me rename, and I'm gonna paste it in there. Oh, look at that, it does work. That's great. Okay, so we're on to something now. So what are our fields called? So CO2, CH4, Okay, so CO2, rename, okay, and then CH4, so that's a really good thing to know, CH4, okay, so now at least they look right, yeah, so that's great, um, I like that one. Okay, um, so the AGGI, the aggregated index, so versus 19.9, okay. So this is AGGI. I'm gonna just rename this one as AGGI. Okay. Okay. And these are all just values. So maybe what we could do is, um, I'm gonna get rid of this one. And what does this total field do? Okay, so the total just adds, so the total is each of these added together. I'm gonna 
I'm going to maybe create a, a, a parameter action or a set action that lets me click on a year and then compare everything to that year. So let's just see if we can make that work. So I'm going to create a new uh, create a parameter and I'll just call it my uh, year parameter. And let's make an integer, click on OK. And I'm going to show that parameter. And I'll just type something in here now. So let's say, I don't know, 2000. And now what I want to do, oh, this is going to be a pain. Um, because well, I'm going to have to write a calculation for each of these. OK, maybe, shoot because we can't use measure names in a calculation, which is super annoying. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is if, I, I don't wanna write out like 10 separate calculations, I might have to. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna duplicate this data source <clears throat> and then edit the data source and I'm gonna, pivot all of these fields. And then these would be my measures. And then these are my values. OK. So I could rebuild this same chart if I go measures and then put measures here. Default properties sort. And I want to do it manually. So CO2, and then what do we have here? Can we go, ah, come on. CH4, N2O, CH4, N2O, I think that's nitrous oxide. Okay. Okay, and then CFCs. Okay, so the rest of that's good. And I want to exclude those. Okay, right. Um, so now if I put values here. So what was gonna, let me go back and kind of explain what was gonna happen. So back here, um, I need to write a calculation that basically gets the value for the year 2000. And then I wanna compare every other year to that year. The problem is, I would need to write a calculation for each measure. So I have to say like, if the year is 2000, then return the CO2. If the year is 2000, then return CH4. And I don't wanna write out all of those, um, you know, I don't wanna write out eight different calculations. So when I pivot the data, I could write just one calculation. But let's format the view first. So I'm gonna do independent uncheck include zero. And I'm just gonna get rid of values. Okay, so let's see if we can make this work now. And we can shrink it up, something like that. Maybe do fit height, edit the axis, and let's get rid of that. Okay, so let me show the parameter. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write my, lo my level of detail expression. Um, and I need to write a level of detail expression because I need every year to compare to the year in the parameter. So I'm gonna start by just writing my if statement. So if the year is equal to the year parameter, then I wanna return the values. Uh, end, okay, so that's gonna give me the values. And then I want to fix that um, at the measures level. So for each measure, um, I wanna now do sum and then close off the bracket and the mustachio. So this is saying for each measure, um, bring back the uh, the value based on the year. Okay, so let me show you what happened. Oh, so rename. So we'll call this um, uh, value for parameter. Now, if I drag this over to the view, you should see it goes into a straight line for every single year, right? So if I look at 2020, I get 1.5. You see my tooltip, the value for the parameter is 1.5, and the values are 1.5. So you see the values for parameter never changes for CO2, but then for, CO, for CH4, it stays at 0.5. 
and so on. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. So now I want to create a new calculated field, and I'm going to call this uh, variance to parameter. And it's simply going to be the um, value, let's see. We want to do the value, oops, values minus value for parameter and click on OK. And if I drag that to the view instead, then uh, let me duplicate this. Duplicate. Get rid of that. Okay, so let me go back over here. I'm going to look at just the variance. And let's edit this axis and do uh, uncheck include zero and make them independent. Okay, well, it doesn't matter if we un uncheck include zero because there's always going to be something at zero. Okay, so that shows the change, right now it's showing the change versus uh, the year 2000. Um, okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now do the percent change. Variance. And that's going to be my variance to the parameter divided by the value for the parameter. And let's format that. And let's make it a percentage to, uh, let's say, I don't know, let's try one decimal for now. And let me, let's see, so if we put that here, that's, uh, okay, so that doesn't look very good. So let me duplicate the sheet again and put my percent variance on here instead. And let's edit the axis, independent, uncheck include, or it doesn't matter. Okay. So one of them is four. Yes, yeah, so HFCs have are increased by 450% versus the year 2000. So that's not great. Right. Um, so maybe what we'll do is let's label the min max and we want to put it as the max year. We'll just do the max year. And on the label, let's put our percent variance. So we get something like that. Okay. Then what we could do is, uh, let's format this a bit. So I'm gonna add on a reference line for the entire table for the year column. And I'm gonna use my parameter here. I don't want a label. I don't want a tooltip. I do want a, uh, maybe a dashed line. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe a, and let's make it, uh, yeah, I think that looks okay. And I'm gonna now add on a dot for each of those values. So let me, value for parameters, let me, um, I'm gonna rename this as, and I'm gonna duplicate, No, that's not going to matter. Um, I want to make it obvious that it's at zero. So I'm going to just put the average of zero on here. Make this a dual axis and synchronize. No, don't want to do that. If the, I only want the zero to show up on the year for the parameter. So if the year is equal to your parameter, then uh, zero, end. Okay, so now if I put that over here and let's synchronize, I'm gonna make this a circle. Okay, and then this one, I'm just gonna make sure the mark type is aligned. Okay, that's good, so we can now Hide that header. And uh, let me just get rid of the measure names here. And then the zero, I'm gonna maybe make that black and let's uh, get rid of the border. Click on size, I'm just gonna reduce the size of it. Nope, now it's too small. Yeah, something like that. I'm just trying to make it more obvious where the, um, 
and I have 336 nulls, so let's hide that. And we get something like that. Um, <clears throat> we could uh, also color the line by percent variance. What does that look like? Um, so maybe we, let's maybe use a, um, how about sunrise to sunset? And what does that look like? So advanced center at zero. Okay, that doesn't work very well. Use full color range. Yeah, that's not very good. Um, let's try makeover Monday. Okay, that's pretty ugly. I'm just gonna keep trying a few different ones here. I need a diverging palette. What about this one? Apply. Rich black, ruby red. What, it, what would be nice is to be able to make these colors independent on, on each row. Um, so I don't think that works. I'm going to, well, it's not terrible. Maybe I'll leave it for now. Okay, and then I'm going to now format the view and I'm going to set my zero line. So let's turn our grid lines uh, on and back off. And now my zero line, I'm going to maybe make that, uh, what if I make that just a solid, maybe I'll go like that, make it uh, black uh, like that. See, it's annoying, I can't get the circles. Oh, what I could do actually, so let me make this none. What I'll do actually is I'll go and bring on another, this time I'll bring on a constant line. So zero, edit, no label, no tooltip, that. But maybe I make this one thinner. Now let's do the same. Okay. All right, so let's keep doing some formatting here. Let's get rid of the row and column dividers. And I'm gonna add now, they look like they run together now, so I'm gonna actually add uh, some row banding on. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then let me format this view. And actually, maybe I could set the default number format to zero decimals. Okay, so let's uh, <clears throat> let's change the default number format back to zero decimals. Okay, I need to fix that again. Default properties, number format. I want to have pluses and minuses in there. So I'm going to do plus 0.0%, semicolon minus 0.0% or no, minus zero percent. So that allows me to separate the positive and the negative. So now I'm gonna go in my tooltip, you will see the negatives there. Okay, so let's get rid of the tooltip. Um, <clears throat> maybe I should label the both ends of the line. So let me come back here and label them in as well. Let's maybe make the label maybe seven point. Um, and so now I can hide the header, so I don't need that. Okay. And now let me edit the axis and I'm going to have it go from, I need to give it a bit of space now. So let's make it go from, let's say 1970 to uh, 2030. Okay, so now the labels are on the ends of the lines and I'm going to go to the label and I'm going to, in alignment, I'm gonna set them to centered. Okay. So that looks okay. Um, it's not great, but it's a bit better. Let's hide the field labels. We can now uh, 
maybe we format the view. Let's make these nice and big. Okay. Maybe I get rid of the, let's get rid of this one. Let's exclude that one. Okay, but now I've got this weird, there we go. Okay, so this gives us kind of that hierarchy. Um, let's see, on setting this, Okay, so Prashanth, when would I use case when over choosing if? Oh, that's an excellent question. I have a video that does just that. So, um, videos, where is it here? If then versus case, so let me um, copy, copy the link for that. All right, so let me, Prashanth, I'm going to paste that in for you. Maybe I can just leave this open another window. Um, okay, here you go. Okay, let me go back over. Okay, uh, would there be a problem with having a percent variance be a sum? It'll need to be an LOD. Okay, rephrasing, my, okay. Um, so the reason I needed to write this as an LOD is because if I don't write it as an LOD, okay, well, let me just do that. Let me get rid of, let me get rid of this so you can see what happens here. I'm gonna hit apply. And the only place I'm gonna get a value is at the year that I chose because I have, I need that, I need the, the value for the year 2000 to go across the entire view for comparison. So let me undo. And if you want to hover over, we could see the, um, we have a variance because we have a value for the year 2000 and we have a value for the year that is um, uh, hovered over. Okay, um, so now let's set up an action. So I'm gonna set up a action. I'm going to set up a change parameter action. I'm going to call it update year parameter. And I'm going to do on select and year parameter. And what I could do is I could, um, I wonder, no, I don't want to do that. Keep the current value. So source field is the year and then click on OK, click on OK again. OK, so now when I click on a mark, everything moves, right? The reference line moves, but everything's highlighted. So what I want to do now is I'm going to create a calculated field called uh, dehighlight. And I'm just going to put a word in here, go to the all marks card, and I'm going to drag that to the detail shelf. I don't want that in my tooltip, so I'm going to uncheck include in tooltip. Now, if I go up to my highlight option here at the top, uh, let's see what happens when I choose D highlight. So I click on that and you'll see it. It uh, That looks like it works, right? Um, so that's one way to get rid of the highlighting. So let's uh, get rid of that. The other way is through another action. So let me create an action and I'm going to create a filter action. Filter dummy. That's only for sheet three. And we're going to do it on click. Uh, keep filtered values, selected field. So I want to go from the D highlight to something else that's not in the view. Uh, let's just try measures. Let's see what happens. This, this might break, actually. OK, yeah. So that broke because measures was in, in the view. OK, so let me create another one. Let's call it um, dummy. And let's call this one um, someone. If I put that on the view as well, and let me go back to my action. 
and I want to go from that to tummy. So those are never going to be equal. So what happens now? Okay, so that, did, that didn't work. Okay, so let's get rid of those two fields. Nope, not that one. And we'll just have to use the highlight option. So let's go up here to de-highlight. I'm going to go back to my actions just to make sure that that other one is gone. So we need to remove that and click on OK. Right, so now when I click on a year, at least the lines still, uh, still appear. The color, basically the only thing that happens here is the colors change, right? And you can see the percentages on the ends change. Okay, um, I think that's okay. It's not, it's not fantastic, but it's not terrible either. Uh-oh, what just happened there? Uh, right. Oh, the year is 172,000, so let's make this 2,000. Okay, there we go. Or we can make it 1990 and see how everything compares to 1990. Right, so that's a way um, that we could do that. Now let me format the bottom. Let's maybe make that eight point and maybe a light gray so that it's kind of hidden. Okay, any other, okay. Um, um, so Prashanth, you asked again why I would use case versus when. So watch that video um, that I sent. So that should clear it up for you. Looks like you asked the same question twice. So that's that. Um, I think it's okay. Um, the HFCs is really, what are HFs, HFCs? Let's look at here, let's look at uh, HFCs. Where is it? Okay. For a list of chemicals included in those, see caption two, figure three. Okay. So this is figure four. Okay. It includes the most abundant HFCs. Okay. Well, that doesn't help very much. So let's see what else we can do. Um, I'm going to go, let me go back to the original data source. And we could, um, let's get rid of the count versus prior that and that. And let's put measure names on color and measure values on the rows. And now if we make this a stacked area chart, the total, so we can get rid of the total, and now we have those different values. Now that looks, I think, particularly terrible. So I'm not gonna go with that. I wonder if this one, so let me duplicate this. I wonder what this would look like as an area chart. So let's try area and see what happens. Oh, actually, I like that better. Um, and now what it's, I don't really know what it's, how it's coloring now. Um, it looks like, yeah, I have no idea how this is, how this is coloring things. So let me, let me take this off of color. But the colors look neat, but I don't know what they're telling me. It's probably taken the average of all of the variances or something like that, but but our black color is okay, let's let's do this. Apply. Center at zero. Use full color range. Maybe what I should do is I'm gonna color it by the most recent. No, I don't want to do that. Because it's an area chart, you can only use a single color. So I'm going to switch it to actually a bar chart. And then what if I just make these really small? Maybe make them slightly bigger. I'm going to make them so they kind of look like an area chart. I could probably cheat. OK, so let me duplicate this so everybody duplicate. OK, so. I'm going to I'm going to get rid of this zero field. 
I know that gets rid of my dot, but I'm going to be okay with that. I'm going to put my percent variance on the right hand side as well now. Come on. Oh, I need to do it this way. So let's make it a dual axis and synchronize. And I'm going to make this one a line. Okay, and then on my line, let's maybe make it thicker. Okay, so that's just a way to kind of like, so what I've done there is sort of like smooth out the area chart. So let's get rid of that. So you see how I've kind of, if I, let me take this back off. You see how it's kind of jagged across the top. When I put the variance on there, it kind of makes it look like an area chart that's colored. So I don't know if you like that or not. I think it looks pretty cool. So let's hide, uncheck show header. And now we have something like that. So curious to know your thoughts on that. I think it looks pretty neat. And uh, so now if I click on something, it moves. It looks a bit weird oh, because my line has a halo on it. Um, so why does my... See, when you highlight something, it puts a halo on it. Um, I don't know if I have any control over that uh, worksheet. Let me see. Um, highlighters. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be anything in there. I'm just trying to see when I click on something, it puts this, you know, it, it just highlights the line, which I don't really want it to do. Um, but is there a way to do anything about that? So we can format highlighters. No, that's not that. Um, maybe there's no way to do that. Okay, well, I'm just going to leave it as it. So I actually, I kind of, I kind of like this view now. Um, Maybe, so what does it look like if I get rid of the, um, if I just make a table and get rid of, so no, I want to just do line ends like that. So that gets rid of the little circles on the end, but I think it's better probably to have them because then it, yeah, I think that's okay. Okay. So curious, what do you think about that? Yeah, give me a bit of a bit of feedback here. I, I think I like it. Um, yeah, so let, let me I'm just gonna go with this because I don't have a lot of time today. Um, you know, you could make it maybe make it a small multiples chart, but then it's gonna get ruined by this 110% value. Um, yeah, I was gonna I, you could make it maybe like a like a panel chart or a, a trellis chart. But on a trellis chart, the scales need to be the same. Otherwise, it looks a bit weird. And because the HFCs is so large, it's going to throw the scales way off for everything else. Um, so I think, I'll, I think I'll leave it like that. OK, so let's come up with a title then. Um, so I'm going to look back here and um, Okay, so what could we come up with a, with a title? Um, let's see here. Let's see if there's anything interesting in the article. Okay, let me go up here. So this is just telling us. Okay. So I'm going to start with maybe something like this. So 
we'll leave it like that for now. Um, so let's say radiative forcing. Maybe just greenhouse gases continue to increase in the atmosphere. Um, have continued to increase the atmosphere from 1978 to 2021. But how do they compare to, and I'm going to insert my parameter, click on a year. Okay. All right, so let me just try that. It's a really long title. All right, and you see my formatting has commas, so I need to set the number format to no comma. Okay, and now I'm going to clean this up when I put it in the dashboard. So I want to show the caption and data is NOAA created by, okay. Okay, something like that. Okay. So let's go to the dashboard and I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna worry about doing any kind of like fancy floating, or actually I'll do it, it'll bother me if I don't. So let me, and now what I need to do is I need to change this action from a, um, oh, what's this one here? Let's. What sheet is this that's on the view? Sheet 4.4. Four. Wait, is that the right one? Yeah. Worksheet actions. And this needs to be from the dashboard. Um, sheet 4. Okay. And now if I click on something, it should change. Okay. So good. So now I'm going to go to layout here and I'm going to initially set my X and my Y to be the same as the dashboard. And I'm going to set maybe 20 pixels of inner padding. Okay, now I know this is way too wide. It's not what we're looking for. So I'm going to, um, let's, uh, Maggie, what are you doing? Um, let me just change the dashboard here. Okay, so let's reduce the width. Maybe that kind of width is good. And let me show the caption. All right, so now I need to make my bars a bit wider. So. Let me, this is where you just kind of have to go back and forth. Okay. Yeah, so that looks okay. Um, uh, but how do they compare to, I'm thinking, Maybe it's better instead of to have the instead of having the no let's okay. I need to say something like click a year. Or yeah, okay. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just Click a year. Okay, so that's there now. Oh, I need to clean up my tooltips too. Um, 
so I don't want that in the tooltip. I want my year, I want my percent variance, I don't need my parameter in the tooltip. Can't do that there. Maybe I should put the value in there. So values, let's put those in the tooltip. Um, and maybe value for the, that's okay. All right, so now let's go into our tooltip. Um, no. So year, and then, no. Oh, oh, come on, come on, get down. Come on, get down. Almost done. Almost done. Okay. It's dinner time. Um, and then I'm going to put the value in here. So let's move that. So percent, I'm going to say percent change. Versus, I'm going to insert my parameter. Actually, okay, so how's that look? Okay, I should. Probably, okay, so in the tooltip, let me insert um, the measures. Okay, so now I'm going to make this a bit bigger. Okay. Um, what was the other thing I was just going to do? Um, yeah, so let me go here. Let's change our font. Always try to change the, the default font. <clears throat> um, what do I want to use? Um, I'll just do something simple like Avenir. I know some people don't like that, but it does render on Tableau Public. So, okay, so now down here in my axis, um, I'm going to change this again. So let's make this 1971 through 2029. And I'm doing that so that I don't see the values for, um, actually, maybe what I should do is we start with 1970. No, well, we don't need to filter out the year, though, do we? What is the data set? Okay, no, that's good. Um, so I'm going to format my axis. I'm actually just going to have it go from, oops, let's edit the axis, and I'm going to, Get my tick marks, I'm going to fix it. The origin is going to be 1979. And then there's how many years? There's, uh, oh God, there's because of 20. So 2021 plus 20 was 42. So let me make a tick interval 21. Yeah, there we go. So now that just gives me kind of the, the, the beginning, the middle, and the end on the on the axis. Um, okay, so now if I want to change it to the, oh, and my highlight is broken now. Okay, so I think, I think this is good now. So let me make it uh, 1990 and see what it looks like. Or we could say, you know, how have things changed since the year 2000, right? And now we get something like that. So um, I think, let me see. I, I really liked having that circle on there. So let me, let me see if I can figure that out. Um, compared to, um, 
then this should be 1979, not 1978. Is there a way for me to also get the zero on there? Okay. I'm going to try this. Let me put that there and then Where to measure names? Okay. But now my zero is messed up. Um, so I can't get the zero to be a circle. Okay, that's all right. Let me just go back. Undo. Okay. I think that's right. Okay, so I, I think I'm gonna go with that. I kind of like how it turned out. I like how it looks like an area chart. Um, <clears throat> I've kind of taken a bar chart and smoothed it out in a sense. And as opposed to, so let me, um, where was it when I did it as an area chart? Uh, so yeah, I, let me just duplicate this one. And when I made this an area chart, we only got a single color, where this one, we're now getting colors that are the variance to that value. So I, I think that's good. Um, so HFCs have increased by 1,000% since the year 2000. Okay, so click a year. I think that's okay. Um, so that's good. Okay. I want to maybe center these. I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to edit this and I'm going to put the let me just make this uh, click a here and click OK and then I'm going to format the reference line. I'm going to put my um, reference line label at the center and at the top. And then let's set the shading to 100%. Okay, so now I don't need, oops. I don't need this in the view anymore. So now that click a year will move along with the reference line, that label. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, thanks for tuning in, we're at exactly an hour. Um, yeah, I appreciate everybody uh, joining today. And, uh, and for all of your questions along the way. And uh, I will see you again next week. And everybody have a good start to the new year. I wish you the best for 2023. Bye.